Okay, number two. So for this question, I've actually solved it all in advance, only because there would be a lot of, you know, calculation in that, and it's better to get to the point of this. So let's have a quick read, yeah? So the following group frequency distribution summarizes the number of minutes to the nearest minute, okay? When you see this word nearest minute or nearest something, what they're trying to tell you is that if you look at this section here, you'll realize that there's gaps after every interval, like between six and seven, there's nothing. That's because it's been rounded up, rounded down or up. And what we really need is the non-rounded values. So we have to 0 0.5 plus minus 0 0.5 on each side to get what it could have been if you before you rounded it. Okay? And that's it. So moving on, they tell us that they have a random sample of 100, which were delayed by roadworks on a stretch of motorway and so on. Okay, so that's fine. So n is 100. So this means all of this, all the total frequency, which is f, adds up to 100. Okay. Next, they give us a midpoint values here, which are between the each of these ranges. So that's great. We're going to use this to find fx later on. Now let's keep going. So a histogram has been drawn to represent this data. Now a histogram looks a bit like this. Yeah. This is just a general formula. The way I look at this is that the frequency here, which is the number mo motorists, must equal the class width times some height known as the frequency density. Now we're given the class width over here, which I found, which are the non-rounded values. And to find the actual width of it, it would be the difference. So these, so these values in brackets are the, the values of the class width. Let's just call it width, yeah? And to get the frequency density, it would just be base times height equals area. So since we know for the first one, for example, the width is four and the height we don't know, but we know that the area is 38. So we can say, okay, to get the height, it would just be 38 over four, which will give us 9.5. And then you do the same for the rest. So 25 divided by 2 is 12.5 and so on. So you should get your frequency density. Now, we're going to use this for part A here. So the bar representing a delay of 3 to 6 minutes, so over here, has a width of 2. So this means that we know that the number of minutes of the width is 4, but it's measured in centimeters. So 2 centimeters equals 4, which I put over here. And has a height of 9.5, which is the frequency density. So in units, in centimeters is 9.5. Equivalently, is also 9.5 units. So these two are the same. And they want us to calculate the width and the height of the bar representing 11 to 15. So they want us to actually work out in centimeters the width representing this and the height of that. Now, looking at the 3 to 6 one, if every 2 centimeters equals 4 minutes, that means for 1 minute, just dividing by 4, you get 0.5. So it's good to kind of think of these as ratios. And for the height, it's basically 1 to 1 because 9.5 centimeters equals 9.5 units. Now for 11 to 15, the delay group, we can see that the class width is 5 minutes. And we know that for every minute, it's 0 0.5 centimeters. So for 5 minutes, if you times it by 5, you get 2.5 centimeters. And then for the, the height, the frequency density, for the 11 to 5 group, we got 2.4. So, and thankfully, because it's one to one, 2.4 units must equal 2.4 centimeters. And that's it, that's literally done. Now, let's go to the next one. <clears throat> okay, so use linear interpolation to estimate the median delay. Okay, so I always update the slides, by the way, guys, just so with, with new information. Now, to get the median delay and to use interpolation, you gotta use some kind of method like this. So I, I started over here. And the keyword is median. Median means the middle person or the middle motorist. Because we've got 100, this means that the middle person must have been the 50th or technically the 50.5th. Uh, <laughs> but you can say 50th is okay. Now, the trick is, is to firstly, um, you know, separate this into two groups. Ignore these values for a second. So this is going to be the 50th person and this is going to be the nth minute representing 50. So looking at our table, we just need to find the cumulative frequency up until uh, that includes the 50th person between. So basically, find the cumulative frequency from here all the way up to 100, and you realize that the 50th person must lie between these two values. So then we plug in, so then we write 38 here and 63 there, because 50 lies between. That means the minutes that lie between must be equivalently between everyone up to the 6.5th minute and everyone up to the 8.5th minute. Because remember, this includes everybody up to all 63 people included so far. So that means the highest it could have been is 8.5. And same for this one. For 38, this means everyone up to 38 motorists. 
meaning the highest delayed minute could have been 6.5. So that's why you have to make it corresponding. So that's the easy bit. The next bit is to literally form an equation. Now my trick is to literally just look at this and just find common ratios. So I'll say, all right, hang on. So between the median 8.5, the difference between these two must be equivalent to the difference between 1563. So that's why I put them over it like a ratio. Then I pick another um, comparison. I chose, just to make it easier, the difference between 6.5 and 8.5 is equivalent to the difference between 38 and 63. And that's why I made a ratio like that. And all you do now is just evaluate this and make M the subject. So the quicker to do this is to smash this right hand side into the calculator and then multiply it by 50 minus 63, which is minus 13. And then finally add 8.5. And, and, and then you should get m equals this 7.46 minutes if you guys get a different answer and if you use 50.5 you would actually get m equals 7.5 minutes okay it depends i mean um it's not really a big deal it's probably more accurate to say this anyway but 50 if it should be fine as well anyway let's move on to c Ooh, all right mean and stand deviation so these ones you know they're not so bad they're very quick now, for this one, as just like the previous questions, you need to make a brand new uh, co uh, column, yeah? You need to firstly have an fx, because this is needed for the mean and standard mean formula in particular. So, let's have a look. So, fx just literally means frequency times x, so that's why I put a little x signs. So, 38 times 4.5 gives us 171. And doing the rest, multiplying the rest of these, you should get these values. And then, you'd have to sum these up, okay? So, you can have the sum of fx. And it should give us 811.5 now remember they also gave us this i mean if they didn't give us this then you would have to find another table called x squared and square each of these values and then sum them up so trust me that would have been long <laughs> so this is actually convenient now using the mean the mean formula is easy it's just the sum of fx over n and we know that the number for number of motorists was 100 because these add up to 100 so just sum of fx so 811.5 over 100 and that'll give us the mean so it should be around this but yeah guys let me know if it's if you guys get something similar yeah now for d to find the standard deviation it's always easier to find the variance first because the variance is the square of standard deviation and it looks easier formula wise yeah so the good thing is it has the same relationship instead of the sum of fx it'll be the sum of fx squared so we're going to use this value here okay over the sample size so that's why we got this over 100 and then we have to minus that by the mean squared and that's it you put then you put all this in a calculator square root answer to get a standard deviation and you should get 3.887 that's it all done guys again compare with me and let me know if you guys got something similar and let's move on to the last two okay so i've copied out the mean median and standard deviation values because this can be needed for this formula here okay now let's have a read. So one coefficient of skewness is given by um, the three times mean minus median. Another way they could have wrote this, by the way, is mean minus mode over standard deviation. So they could also ask you that. So it is not important anyway. Now evaluate this coefficient for the above data for what we're given. Give your answer to two same figures. So just do what, do what they say then. So the skewness, I use the gamma notation, you don't have to. Plug in the values into this formula and you should get 0.51. Two significant figures. Next question. On the following Friday, the coefficient of skewness for the delays on the stretch of motorway was minus 0.22. So there's a difference. The, remember, this is talking about the original value, the original information was about Monday. Because if you remember, going back to the beginning, it says on the stretch of motorway one Monday. So this is dated reference to Monday. Okay. So that's our positive screwness. And for Friday, it was negative screwness. Now, F, state given the reason how the delays on the stretch of motorway on Friday are different. So one thing we can do is firstly try and draw a sketch. We can say that due to the difference of the mean, if the mean is less than the median, this gives us a negative screw, hence the answer. So this means that the bulk of the information is on the, is on the left tail. The bulk information is on the right-hand side with a long left tail. Whereas for Monday, it's a positive screw. So we have a long right tail with the bulk of the data on the left-hand side. And what this means is if you look at the data set, just to get information, you can see that most of the information came from the early minutes. 
So you can say most of the, what's it, what's it about? Most of the delay came in the early parts because look how big the values are. Whereas on Friday, most of the delay came from the later parts. So that's really it. So you can add that information in, it's good. I kept it brief in my information, but always talk about the table values and just realize that the tail of the distribution tells you where, every, where, most of the info, where most of the data points are. And that's it guys, I hope this video helped. Let me know um, if you got any questions for number two. Otherwise, I shall see you guys in number three. Ciao.